Hey guys, welcome back to The Nomadic Foodie. Today I'm going to share five tips that I wish I knew before going to the Florida Keys. Number one, menu prices online change without notice. So don't be surprised if you see a menu online on their website, but then when you actually go there in person, the price is different or they don't have a certain item. I checked out a bunch of different restaurant menus and a lot of the restaurant websites are challenging to navigate to begin with. So don't trust the menu items or prices that you see online. So even the most popular restaurants will have menu items that are listed on the menu, but they don't have it. A lot of businesses are locally owned and they kind of just close their business without a lot of notice. For example, we wanted to visit this donut place in Key West and when we got there, it was closed. So it was really sad. So when you're doing your travel planning in the Keys, don't a hundred percent settle on going to eat somewhere because it just might be closed especially with things like seafood a lot of things might be seasonal and especially with the supplies issues these days a lot of restaurants have actually just taken items off of their menu but they just haven't updated their website online so once again don't just you know go online and expect to order a very specific thing from a very specific restaurant because they might not have it if you are taking a road trip to the Keys, just know that gas station prices tend to be higher before entering into Key Largo. So if you're coming from Miami, for example, right before you enter Key Largo, you'll see a bunch of gas stations and just know that those gas station prices are going to be the most expensive ones. But once you enter into Key Largo, it drops a little bit. And from our experience, we have driven from Key Largo all the way down to Key West and I was scanning all of the gas station prices, you know, just between Key Largo all the way to Key West. And for me, the sweet spot was between Marathon and some parts of Key Largo. Especially if you are going on the Seven Mile Bridge, you definitely want to have a sufficient amount of gas before you enter the Seven Mile Bridge. But just know that there are plenty of gas stations in the Keys. So don't feel like you have to get gas before you enter Key Largo because you just might be paying a lot more than you have to. Another thing to know is that the speed limit changes a lot between the keys. From Key Largo to Key West, we saw so many police vehicles parked on the side of the road. Sometimes they're in the shade, you know, you can't really see them. And we saw people being pulled over. So just keep that in mind to be careful, of course, while driving safely and responsibly. And yeah, just watch out with the speed limit because they do vary and they they do watch us, so just keep that in mind. Another thing is they have a lot of stores, like grocery stores, a lot of them are locally owned, but in Key West especially, you do have big national brands, and I saw a Home Depot in Marathon, but I will say Key West has the most amount of national brand stores. They even had things like Ross and TJ Maxx and a Banana Republic, but a lot of businesses and you know grocery stores, souvenir shops, they are locally owned, so don't be surprised if the restaurant is closed on a Sunday or if a restaurant only opens on the weekends or if they are closed for an entire month. So do plan ahead, especially if you're staying in Key Largo or Ala Morada. They tend to have the more local businesses. So you might want to double check hours for, you know, businesses like um, restaurants and stores so that you don't plan on buying stuff and you, you're out. So you can plan ahead and have a plan B in case the place you want to go to is closed. And last but not least, it is very common to rain in the tropics. So don't be too sad if you wake up in the morning, you know, ready for your beach day, but it's raining and pouring even. Don't be too sad because it will probably blow off, you know, in like a few hours or an hour or so. It happened to us while we were there in the Keys. It was pouring rain, but by the time we got to the car and ready to actually drive out to the beach, it was dry and we had an awesome beach day and we went snorkeling and everything. Once again, don't be, you know, too sad if it's raining. It is good to have a plan B. Maybe you can visit some museums and things like that on rainy days. But for the most part, if it's raining in one key or island that you're staying at, it might not be raining at all once you drive out of that island. If you are new here, my name is Kat. I am the Nomadic Foodie and I do travel guides and food guides around Florida. So if you want to see more of where to go and where to eat in Florida, please subscribe and stay tuned.